What's up, Mo Hustlers? Do a little pre check right here. Hey, Mike. See, Mike's the first one to be on here, Mike. Mike, can you hear us? Don't do it here. What's up, Mo Hustlers? I have to leave this page here. Oh, technical guys. Yep, can you hear now? All right, guys. I'm going to have to switch between my phones and wherever is on the screen. So, <clears throat> this app is not, uh, they're not to speed yet. So, uh, what's up, too? What's up, uh, Linville? What's up, Mike? Uh, we got a few other people on here. I wish I can see it. Let's see, host chat. Oh, man. The screen doesn't show it. So, they uh, they upgraded this whole uh, platform, which is uh, VE Live that I use here. And uh, I think it's they're having conflicts with Facebook with privacy laws. So before I used to be able to see your names and stuff like that, but now it's kind of like, uh, uh, <laughs> so now it's kind of hiding some of your names and see who joined. So uh, Yang goes, do one on Guang Lui. Uh, negative Yang, we're not gonna do one on Guang Lui because that stuff is illegal. <laughs> So we get a few minutes. I know there's like a few of you guys that are joined. Don't you guys join? Hey, appreciate it. You know, you guys staying up late. It's like 11:30 right now here in Florida. It's probably like an hour off. Like what? 10:30 in Minnesota and the U.S. Coast guys. It's like what? Almost nine, I think. I think. So uh, uh, let me see here. Let me see if I can switch over. Take this out. All right, guys. More people killing it. <laughs> to give it up, bro. <laughs> 99 plants. Let's not give anybody more tips on this, all right? <laughs> all right, guys. Welcome to show 14 of Mo Hustlers, all right? Uh, you guys joining? Uh, we got an awesome show today. Uh, we got this hustler here. Man, we've been trying to get this guy to come on the show for a while now. Um, I got this real estate group. Uh, it's called Mo Real Estate In Investors Group. Uh, we got about three thousand people in it. Um, we, we we've been voting to see who uh, who we want to do a show on, and this is the main guy, guys. This is the main guy, and every and for the past few months that he's been on this group, anything he puts out has drawn so much attention, right? So we've been trying to get this guy on on to uh, do a show. And so we can pick his brains and see how he does his deals and stuff. So <clears throat> those of you guys join, appreciate it. Let us know where you guys are from. If you guys are in West Coast, let us know. You know, let, we want to know what state you guys are in. Like if you're in California, uh, type in CA. If you're in Florida, type in FL. Florida guys are probably all asleep now. But uh, it is my honor to in introduce this guy, right? Uh, his name is Tule. Uh, he's got four kids. This guy's a hustler, guys. Four kids, right? Brown belt in judo. Brown and black belt. I think that's almost the same thing. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, he's got an engineering degree. He's got, you know, he works full time as, as an engineer. And then, you know, he's been doing this for a while, right? So, how does this guy do this? And then in the past month, purchased like four properties. We want to know. Did you guys want to know? Let us know. Uh, if you guys have any questions, though, go ahead and type in the comments section, um, and uh, we'll get him the answer. Uh, we'll do this live, right? Uh, we won't wait till the end. If you got any questions, just type right there. I'll, I'll ask him right on, on the spot. All right, guys? So with uh, no delay, let's bring this guy on. Uh, let me find, I can't find my mouse. There we go. 
on screen. There we go. Two bang. Hey guys, you all wanted to see. What's up, man? Hey, what's up, Chai? How's everything going, man? <laughs> all right, man. We've been waiting to get to you on the show, man. We appreciate <laughs> I you coming. Yeah. Man. I know you got a lot of stuff to do. I mean, dude, you you're probably like what? You probably got some rehab that you should be like working on right now, right? That you're putting off right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure there's management that uh, that's got to be done. But yes, um, I, I appreciate everybody and their request for me to come on. Uh, and you know, like you like you mentioned, uh, the Hmong Real Estate page has asked, uh, and and it's been an honor. And so you know, Chai and Chai has been asking me to get on, but you know, I, I feel like it wasn't the time or or I wasn't qualified, but Come on, I think you guys have asked for it. So, you know, um, without further ado, here I am. Um, my name is Tuvang. I'm a real estate investor coming out of Fresno, California. Um, and, you know, that that's how we get it done out here. California, man. California is like a tough state, man. First of all, it takes a lot just to buy something, right? Oh, yeah. And on top yeah. of that, you got all these like laws that you have to go through. So, like, I commend you on doing this kind of stuff, bro. So. Yeah, it, it, it our tenant laws has actually changed this year. Um, it got a little bit more difficult, where uh, to evict or to remove somebody out of their property, to out of your property, you have to give them a reason now. <laughs> yeah, like, like you're not paying. <laughs> well, that's easy, but you know we're talking about <clears throat> laws where hey, you can't just kick them out of their property yeah. if they're paying on time. So you, it has to be a reason as to why you're doing it okay okay yeah and we can take that to a different show because that's like you know like it's it's like one of the worst states for tenant like landlord tenant right is that is that what they keep saying right i i would i would agree with that statement <laughs> we can take that and you know go with it but tonight we're talking about how you you know beginning of what the century what do you guys call it the next decade what was it you know Yep. the next 10 years starting out the first 10 years of 2000 you know 2020 dude you came out you came out with the with the bang right yeah yep. Boom, bought four properties man dude that's like crazy you know here i am just trying to find like a deal <laughs> yeah, yeah um, a lot of it does take time to groom um and it doesn't happen overnight you know i mean some of these properties i know i've been after for two or three years um trying to get the seller to come along and sell it right so um you know when you guys hear the success stories it's not just oh you know this guy got in and he did it right and that's that's what i tell every new investors the stuff that i put in and the medias and, and the, the contents that i put on social media it's not just it's not just an overnight success you know and that's what i tell everybody yeah. is that some of these stuff like one of the the deals that i did it's actually you know one of the four deals there one of them, I ended up uh, wholesaling because we. Let's get an intro of yourself, bro. What right? was that? Let's get a little intro of yourself, right? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, just so so people don't know who you are, right? <clears throat> First of all, you're you're one of the most active, you know, guys in our real estate group, uh, the Mon Real Estate Group. Uh, we appreciate you, you know, feeding, uh, give us input, and you know, just just getting the group going. So, yep. um, thank you for that. Um, yeah, tell I me. Mean, First of all, let's tell us how did you get started like you're like what 31 yep yep dude 31 i mean dang <laughs> <laughs> what got you in this mindset right yeah so I, yeah go ahead man i think the um you know the answer there is um you know um the short answer is actually purpose right so everybody can probably go into the same thing as as i'm doing is you got you got to find you got to have a purpose you know, and, and I think one of the things that triggered me was I asked a bigger question and, and asked for a bigger purpose. Right. So, um, you know, the, the short story there is I always tell people, uh, you know, when I was making minimum wage, I started working at McDonald's when I was 16. Right. Minimum wage was 675 back then. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like telling myself if I made eight bucks an hour, I'd be killing it. You know, I'd be like, I'd be like. You know, I have enough money to, for my parts and my cars and this and that. And, you know, uh, some years later and I'm making like 10 bucks an hour and I'm like, man, I'm still in the same same routine of paycheck to paycheck. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, if I made 15, I, I'd be doing much better. So, I mean, I'm making 15 
and I'm still no better, right? So, yeah, you know, and and then you know we're all fed the idea of go to school, get a good job, and that's that's the answer to life. And and here I am, I, I finished college with uh, an electrical engineering degree, right? And and I I just happened to, I mean, I made decent money as an engineer, right? But uh, what I found was that. But what was what was the purpose though? Your purpose was like. I, I gotta make more money, right? Than this, like that. I don't. I don't think it was more money, um, but the purpose was more like, hey, is this how I'm gonna live my life for the rest for, cycle for the rest of my life? You know, go to work, go to work, you know, come home, take care of the kids, rinse and repeat that whole process. Is that what I want to do in life, right? So I asked myself that question. Right, right. That's like the rat race. Right? That's what they call it, right? Yeah, well, I mean, that's before I knew it was something like that, right? So, yeah. uh, you know, I, I I know I have my folks telling me, hey, you should go back and get your master's. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> at some point, I, I thought about going back and getting my master's too, right? right. But, I, you know, I mean, I would be in the same situation if I made more money. But the fact is, if I made more money, I would be repeating the same cycle. So is that really, you know, is, is that really advantageous to me? Okay. <laughs> so, 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 you know, I, I, that's when I started looking online and, you know, I ran across this guy on YouTube late one, one night, you know, I was just looking for answers and there's a guy, you know, with the video, his name was uh, called Robert Kiyosaki. I don't know if you guys know him. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I've listened to some of his audios and, you know, it really clicked at the time with what I was looking for. Okay. So, so, so that's how I got started into this whole real estate thing. Okay. In the meantime, you were going to school, right? Well, in the meantime, I finished school. I was working, okay. right? I was I was in the process or was thinking about getting a master's. Oh, damn. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. So, gotcha. So what, so what did Robert... Kiyosaki say that got you going? I I think it, it's just what got me was his four quadrant, right? Um, he mentioned, you know, he's like, you know, you could be an employee, you could be a, a small business owner, you could be a business owner, or you could be an investor. Yeah. Right? And, and, you know, what clicked with me was, hey, even if I got a doctor's degree, I'd still be a poor person, poor mindset. And I didn't like that, right? And so the way he Structure everything together makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, I think so. Those of you guys don't know the full quadrant. I think well, what it is is uh, um, it's it's I, I guess you're you're kind of like your career base, but uh, part of the full quadrant is what who pays the most taxes, right? Yep. Like employee pays the most taxes, right? And then comes you know like a specialist, like a doctor, right? Like so. Like when, when people say like when we go through like election and they can say, you know, we're going to charge the taxes to we're going to give the taxes to like, you know, we charge the big taxes on to the rich guys. Right. Yeah. The investors like two here, you know, <laughs> not gonna get taxed. it's going to be those doctors are going to get taxed, you know. Right. And then it goes to like the businesses and then, you know, the investors. So um, uh, that's one thing that, you know, did, did that grab your and that's what got my attention. Did that, yeah. Is that got your attention too <laughs> so yeah i mean that that's some part of it you know i mean the tax piece honestly came to me afterwards but what got to me was you know the idea of not having to work and that that passive that along with the um <clears throat> financial statement really got me to understand what was going on yeah gotcha gotcha cool uh so so you got through with robert and it, those of you guys join me hey Dude, it's late. We got a bunch of people joining this 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 call here, but yep. uh, uh, thank you guys for joining. Today we're gonna learn about how to kick off like January and bought four properties, right? Like, holy cow! Like, who does that? You know, I thought I was good. <laughs> <laughs> you are good, man. This guy got four properties, and they're like, you know, was it one a week, maybe? So we're here to like ask him, like, hey, you guys have questions? Ask him how he got four properties within like last month right so um yeah so so that so so how you got started was you know just to recap you 
college and then right after that you think about getting your master's and then from there you like okay you saw you you saw you know rich dad kiyosaki telling you you know <clears throat> about this kind of stuff and you know how, how you can make money and stuff like that real estate and taxes you know all this kind of stuff like which is kind of like what every real estate investors have gone through right yeah. um, so then what happened afterwards you know and, and so that you know i bought i saw the video uh of one of his seminar it really clicked with the way i i wanted to go with my future and so i bought i started reading so i bought some of his book um like most of us i bought i bought a hardcover book and i've actually read it from page to page and yeah. you know, that was one of the things i told myself is i wasn't going to ever read a book again after i got done with college <laughs> but here i am you know <laughs> after i got done you know after i got done with the video i read that book cover to cover um and one of the things is i i had to get my wife on board because he was starting to change my ideology yeah and i told her hey you know the first thing i said was let's go buy a house and she asked me what do we get this money from We're like it's going to require a lot of money because i was trying it was new to to the whole family i mean we're all taught to be doctors nurses you know teachers yeah. but in this particular case she came you know she was like where did we get this money from and so i was like i don't know but you know her and i went back and forth and we we were you know we have this different like i said different ideology now because of what i've learned so yeah. i gave her the book and i say here why don't you read the rich dad for that book yeah and you know we you know for like a month or two she didn't say anything and i got kind of irritated because the book didn't look like it was read yeah but what was happening was i was going to work and she was secretly reading the book and uh -huh. like <laughs> like like two months later she came to me and she's like oh yeah hey i got a surprise for you i was like what and she tells me hey i'm done reading this book nice. right and she goes let's go buy a house and so i'm like well so where are we going to get the money from yeah so 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 the 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 other piece to this too is that you know if you guys are married um it's also important to bring your spouse or your other significant person along absolutely uh, well you know and so i <laughs> and so that's one piece of it is that she understood what i was trying to get at right so by having that she came along with with me to to my ideas with my ideas and so um you know and, and you jump upon the the idea of how did i get into my first deal um we technically we, we didn't have a lot of money i know i have some saved up um you know like ten thousand or so but um i had put a good amount of it on my house down payment right so yeah. i was you know i was low on cash so then what i did was i had a 401k that i tapped into yeah. so for those who has a 401k um i didn't do a, i didn't do necessarily do a withdrawal so you can't you're gonna you can do a withdrawal at, at a younger age but you're gonna get taxed like crazy so i did a loan um so there's two types of loan that you can do on a 401k um, the first one is a primary loan, which you get a lower rate and a longer time to pay it back. The second loan on a 401k, you can loan up to 50% of what's old in the, or what you have in a 401k or yeah. 50,000 for max, like five years, 60 months. And you have to pay it back to yourself. Okay. So which one did you do again? What was that? Which one did you do again? So I did the general loan. The primary one. Yeah, well, not the primary one because I bought my house already. So oh, the okay. primary loan was what was used. If if you needed money down to buy your personal home, yeah. your primary home, you could use that. But because I wasn't buying my my primary home, yeah, I uh, I took a general loan out. So I think I, I took out like you know um, twelve thousand or something like that. Okay, and with twelve thousand um, added on to what I had, I was able to. Um, you know, after, you know, I, I didn't know much other than, you know, I think that the time bigger pocket had actually just came out and I was listening to some of their content. This was about like four or five years ago. Yeah. And uh, I was listening to some of their content and it kind of makes sense. So, you know, I followed up with the 1% rule. Um, you know, at least I have to have like some type of uh, net return. <clears throat> so I took that and, you know, I found a property that was like a hundred thousand 
and I had one of the realtors put in an offer and it was accepted. And I'm yeah. like, man, I'm I'm smart at investing. I'm like, I'm like real good. <laughs> so, not knowing that that's almost yeah, like fighting or anything. It's like, yep, yeah, okay. Yep. <laughs> that was it. The the number makes sense, right? So um it pretty much was uh um uh, you know, I cash flow about I would say like 350 bucks a month. Yeah. Okay. So I was I was doing real good on that. Yeah. Um and on that first deal, what had happened was the tenant called me like, I don't know, six months down the line and said, Hey, um, two, my um my, the cooler broke. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, the cooler broke. Unit? Is that what it is? Or that, no, it was a, it was a swamp cooler out here in California. What do you call it? What, what is it? It's a swamp cooler. It's one of those uh water vapor type um cooler is it, is it, ac type is, is, is it like ac is that what it is or yeah, like, it's like ac, oh. AC um, but it's it's you know I, I don't know how to explain it but it's pretty much um water cooler type so okay. we, we we pretty much we had to do a repair on that and i'm like i don't know how to ever i've never fixed a water cooler before so i didn't know how to fix a swap cooler and so i had a contractor come out and I think the the whole replacement ended up costing me about like twenty five hundred, and I was, it was like, yeah, dude, there goes like two years worth of margin right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I ended up losing, uh, you know, like two years worth. But um, you know, on that particular deal, um, I was able to resell it and uh, double up my money on that after two years. So yeah. I consider that, you know, I, I fortunate enough to actually be able to flip that one and and do good on that. Gotcha. Boom. There go. That's the first deal, guys. So those of you guys are, you know, just join or whatever. I appreciate you guys joining. Uh, let us know where you guys are from. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, jot them down right now. Um, but we're gonna tonight. We're gonna talk about how he was able to get uh, four deals, uh, four purchase. I guess you say purchase real estate purchase deals within last month, right? Kicked off, you know, twenty twenty. Boom. Uh, launched it, you know, and. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about it. Um, uh, I just want to just a uh, quick question. Uh, Two says, uh, how did you get your wife on the same page? And I think we just want to find out that you, you gave her the book of Rich Dad Poor Dad, right? All right. That's, how, that's how she got on the same page yep. as far as investing, right? That Was that it? Yeah, pretty much that was it. And, and um, I see that as the struggle between a couple, um, yeah. a lot of couple that, that I talk to uh you know i tell them all the time hey your spouse has to come along or you have to both of you guys have to be on the same mindset because i mean one talks about risk and then the other one doesn't right i mean most of us are are comfortable with hey every dollar i save yeah needs to be saved right and this is talking about risk right some level of risk i, I call it calculated risk but yeah basically that book kind of helped out well you, you just gave it to her and afterwards she was like okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I think what got her was I flipped her question on her, like, how do we get this money? You know, and she was asking me that. But um, I found that book pretty powerful because it kind of brainwashes everybody. Like, instead of you like trying to convince people, like, hey, you know, you can make a lot of money in real estate and stuff like that, you just kind of give them the book and it kind of like after they finish reading it, you know, some people like it took her a month to finish. <laughs> Is that what you yeah. said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About two months, yeah. Yeah, some people go through it like in a couple of days and they're like, they, they change, like, you know, so it's like, yeah, I mean, so if you guys, you know, uh, uh, if you guys haven't read it, read it, guys, it, it's kind of, it kind of brainwashes you to like a different person, like, um, uh, so, um, all right, so let's, let's talk about money, right? So the show is all about money, right? So let's, yep. you know, the, the, those four deals, right? What do you, I mean, what do you consider yourself as? Like an investor or like a, uh, <clears throat> when you buy these four, like what, what I guess, what, what was your strategy going into like, say I'm, I'm buying four or is it just because you just came upon some great deals or was there something like strategy built in? I, I think um, th there's, as an investor, there's, there's multiple strategies in real estate, right? So, um, with these particular four, I just got to make sense that or these numbers has to make sense, right? Number one is I could have a hundred 
you know, people that says, hey, I want to sell my house. But what's important is that we have to understand that the number has to make sense. And most of my deals, I get like, you know, 50 to about, I don't know, 50 to 70 cents on the dollar. Right. So um, and that's where I tell people that's how I mitigate my risk. Right. Going into these deals is that I'm buying it at 50 cents on a dollar, 60 cents on a dollar. So the, the low market value. Right. So if the market was to tank tomorrow, it would need to tank about 4 percent, 40 percent to be even at where I'm at. Right. So I feel pretty comfortable at where where I'm at is, you know, 40 to 60. So, you know, to answer your question, a lot of it just depends on like what is being thrown at me. Right. So as, a, as an investor, I have to be creative with the ideas that I have. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you want to go into any particular deal. So explain what you mean by 50 to 70 percent on the dollar because i didn't know what that meant yeah for like the longest time right and i'm sure yeah. like some of these people in here are like what does it mean by 50 to 70 percent on the dollar right yeah. so like and since we're like you know like no investors left behind here you know show you know we want to if can you explain what that means because that's pretty powerful what you meant that and if you knew what that is that's like wow you know but if you don't know what that means can you explain what that means? Yep. So, so essentially, in in short, um, if if a property was worth, you know, for example, mar at market value is worth a hundred thousand, right? What you want to get it at is you want to get it at fifty thousand, or sixty thousand, or seventy thousand. So that's yeah. about fifty cents on every dollar, or sixty cents, or seventy cents, right? So yeah. you have to have that margin of, um, 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 I call it. Um, buffer i guess or equity what most people would call it and so you know as we all know real estate market cycle goes up and down right so that's that that goes back to my point of if the market was to tank today because most people ask me real estate's risky what if what if what if we crash again yeah i said if i'm if i'm buying these you know the, the simple term that i give people is if i knew that if you knew today that Apple stock, one share of Apple stock was worth a hundred dollar, okay, a hundred dollar, but if somebody says, "Hey, I'll share, I'll, I'll sell you my share for fifty, fifty dollars per yeah. share," would you buy that? <laughs> You'll buy that all day, right? The stock would have to dramatically drop in order for you to lose. Now, the only thing is in stock market, you can't do that because that's called insider trading, right? So <laughs> that's illegal. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, yeah. So that explains those of you newbies there that, you know, it took me the longest time to understand what that meant. I'm like, okay, whatever you said, man, whatever. But yeah. <clears throat> but what, basically what you're saying is the house is 100000 You bought it for like 50000 That's Correct. crazy, right? And then you're making the money. The margin right like from 50 to 100 whatever that's yeah. how you make your money right correct correct okay awesome awesome so all right so let's jump into it right so two goes how did you find and fund your deals right so that first deal this month how did you what you know so so essentially um there did we, did we ever talk about how was there a strategy built in like where we just like stumbled upon it for for what for the four deals or what yeah, yeah. Can you repeat your question yeah yeah so did you just was there a strategy built in you're like hey you know i'm gonna i'm gonna was it where was it like these were like amazing deals that you just saw that came up well i mean like i said i i i think that as an investor you you can't just pigeonhole yourself into, Hey, I'm just going to buy and hold, right. Or I'm just going to flip or I'm just going to wholesale, you know, or whatever your, your situation is. So in this particular case is these deals came in and I was able to get them at, like I said, 50 cents on a dollar, 60 cents on a dollar. Right. So based off of that, um, you know, like, like one of the deals I was talking about earlier in the channel, um, what I did was, there was a lady when when I first started. I didn't know how, I didn't know what I was doing, um, but I knew that most people was like, uh, most people would be like, "Hey, um, 
I'm not doing this. There's no way you can get it for that cheap or whatever. But, but I didn't know what I was doing. So how I reached out or how I find these sellers is that I do what they call a direct mail, right? So I get a list of all the owners that has more than two properties and I mail to them. So this particular, one of these particular four cases or, or, or purchase or transaction, um, I've actually been following this lady for two years, right? So her and I have been going at it for two years. So I call her every month, every other month, you know? And so I've been following up with her yeah. and she had this house since the fifties and she bought it for like, I don't know, 50,000 or whatever it was. So yeah. to her, what I offer makes sense because it was equity built in for her already. She was going to walk away. I mean, it wasn't full market value, but she was going to walk away with more than what she had bought it for. Okay. And she owned it free and clear. I mean, there, there was a few little hiccups there um, with uh, title issues through the prelim. Uh, there was a lien holder on there we couldn't find. And so it took us like three months to, to clear title on that particular case. Gotcha. But um, during that process, another case came up. So the contractor that I was using, um, he knew a friend of him, uh, his for I don't know thirty years, and the, the mom had died, and he had he do, he doesn't want to do anything with it. Yeah, the brother had lit, lived in the property, was a crackhead, and he had trashed the whole house, yeah. right? And the guy was like, the guy finally evicted his brother after six months. The brother's out, but all the people that was hanging out with the brother knew nobody lived at the house. So they kept breaking in, squatting, cops kept going out, calling him. And he called up my contractor and say, Hey, you know, how much is this? Blah, 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 blah. My contractor had reached out to me and, you know, me being me and I'm always the nice guy, right? I'm always like, you know, I'm always trying to help him. And I said, he's like, Hey, help me do this deal. Cause he's seen me grow too. Right. Within like the last two years. And he says, help me grow because I'm trying to figure out, how you know how to buy this like you and i said well you know this is what you do so i emailed them the contract and i said you got to put it on contract the stuff highlighted in yellow is what you need to put in and this is the stuff you need to sign and so i have a three-page contract that i sent him and um he came back and he's like hey I don't, I don't know what to do with the contract and i said you just whatever you do get get the person's name get the price get the address and get them to sign it yeah. And so he's like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll get that done. So he finally got that done. And um, he finally got that done. And he he came back uh, two weeks later and I followed up. I'm like, hey, you know, contractor, whatever. Hey, did you get it done? Did you send it to escrow? And well, first I was like, did you get it signed? He's like, yeah, yeah I got the contract signed. And I'm like, so did you send it to escrow? And he goes, uh, what am I supposed to do? Like, what, what's escrow? Yeah. I'm like, you're supposed to send it to a title company, right? Yeah, <laughs> I knew so. Yeah, he doesn't know what to do, right? Because I mean, he's just a contractor. He doesn't buy houses or anything like that. I mean, the only house he has was his house. Oh. So they said, you know, I, I said you got to send it to title. I mean, here I am trying to help him again, right? And he comes out and he calls me and he goes, "Hey, do you have some time? Can we talk?" And I'm like, "Hey, yeah, what's up? What do you what do you need?" You know? Um, and he's like, "Hey, man." Um, I got this deal that I was telling you about. I don't know what to do with it, but they're willing to sell it for a hundred thousand. Um, the house is worth two thirty, right? So, um, the house is worth two thirty. The guy, the 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 guy that's selling it, he, he inherited. He's like, he doesn't want anything to do with it. He's like sixty years old. He's like, yeah. I don't want to deal with it. And so, my contractor and I had, I said, okay, can you? get him to come to the property. Cause he said, Hey, whatever you do, I'm we'll split it 50, 50. Yeah. And I said, okay, we can do it this way. Uh, so I said, okay, I don't know what you've signed, but can we meet at the property? Yeah. And so we met at the property. Uh, most of the time I have to kind of soften them up and, and walk in, but this guy came up and said, okay, what do we sign? Right. So I'm, <laughs> I know got it like right there, right there, right there. All right, you're giving the contract strictly to you and he walks out right <laughs> but anyways okay, so let's recap here right yeah. so the first deal so the way how you to answer your your question to uh was like how you find your deal is you you do it by direct mail right correct 
Correct. in direct mail. And this is how you found both of these two deals so far, right? The first deal. The first deal. First deal. Okay. So the first deal, how much was that first deal? So that first deal, um, I got it locked up for the final number. We got it locked up was about 125 okay. and the deal was worth about um, probably easily 230. 230. Holy cow, guys. Yeah. So yeah, guys, you know, you guys any questions, you know, <clears throat> ask this question now, you know, <clears throat> so, you know, as we go through this, because, you know, we're going to go through like four deals here. So you get any questions, go ahead and ask some questions here. So that's the first deal. He yep. went in, sent direct mail, just, just letters. Like, I mean, was it, how many, how many letters did you send out? So my, my marketing budget is about a um, thousand a month and I send close to about 2000 letters a month. That's it. I mean, that was it like, how much is sent? How much, how much is stamps right now these days? <laughs> so I have a marketing company that, that sends it out for me. Yeah. Um, and you know, each, each depends on the, the amount that you purchase. Um, the, the company that I use is called click to mail. Yeah. And, and what, what they do is depend on what quantity you want. Uh, they give you a certain discount, but I think yeah. mine ended up being like, I don't know, somewhere like 43 or 50 cents a, a postage. And so they print and they mail. That's right? it. Yeah, that's it. And it comes in a, this little four by six size card, right? Yeah. Because what I was doing at first was I was like, I was mailing it myself and I was printing it. And so I, I considered the, the, the ink, my time, my, yeah. my envelope, my stamp, I ended up paying like 80 cents. Right. So, um, I just ended up having them mill it out. There's your secret right there, guys. Save you a lot of time. He just gave you a valuable link right there. Click to mail, right? Yep. Click to mail. Cents, right. You say 43 cents. Yep. Depending on what quantity they have their rating breakdown. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's, cool. that's nothing, right? It's worth, yeah. That's, that's it's cheap. Cents times a thousand. You spend yep. about four, four $430, right? Yep. Just this one <clears throat> property that's like what 125 and is worth 230. I mean, yep. guys, this smart guy right here, all right? Okay. So, and, and, you know, right. uh, the thing too is none of these are on market, right? So, all these are what we consider off market, they don't they don't even show up on the market. You won't see it on Zillow, you won't see it on the realtor, you won't see it on Trulia, you won't see it on any of those websites for these type of deals, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So that's the first deal. Uh, give us the link to the Mike goes. Give us the link to the direct mailer. <laughs> There's quite a bit. There's yellow letter. Click to mail. mail right. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure the other ones out there too. Right too. Yeah. There's so. quite a bit. Um, there's yellow letter. It depends on what it is. This particular one. Um, I know yellow letter has like. If you're really busy, uh, yellow letter has a. a a sequence of like six months that they send out, right? So you could be put on a six month mailing list that they mail consistently every month. So with click to mail, you have to go in there every month to, to generate the, the the content or the mailing. So yeah. the, the way I structure my cycling marketing cycle is um, each mail, each list I'll, I'll mail to it six times, right? So um, out of these lists, um, the templates would say something like, Hey, my name's two. Yeah. I see you on the property on X, Y, Z street. I'm interested in buying it. Give me a call. So I'll send that out. Mm -hmm. Second one, if I don't hear anything, I'll, I'll follow up with, Hey, this is two again. Haven't heard anything from you. I'm still interested in this property. Give me a call. I'll, I'm interested in buying it all cash, send yeah. it out. Right. And so it's just reiteration of those cycles. Gotcha. And then after six cycles, I, I choose a new list uh, to mail to. Okay, so that that takes care of to your first part, right? How did you find? How did you find? How did you find these deals? So, um, so in this particular case, um, so this first one, um, we were actually going to do a hard money loan on it, mm -hmm. um, but then our second, within that same time frame that we're working on, my contractor came in on the tail end and said, "Hey, I mean, I got my I got my hard money lender saying." You got to sign on the dotted line. We're ready to fund you. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, no, because I was going to flip it. And I would have walked away with probably close to, I would say, 20, 25 
on this first deal. Yeah. And so my hard money lender says everything's in, it's been approved, we clear title, sign on the dotted line, we'll fund your money. <laughs> That's how bad they want the deal. Right. Like, right. We have over a hundred thousand dollar worth of buffer in this first right. deal. Yeah. They're like, sign on the dotted line. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, because you have to with hard money, you have to have you have to come in with a down payment. So when you come in with the down payment, you're put on the interest only payment every single month. And then you need, you know, sometimes you can have 100% funding rehab costs. Um, but in my particular case, I wanted to that rehab costs come out of pocket, right? So then my monthly interest doesn't get hit as much. Um, so the other the, the other second deal came in and it was more of a lucrative deal, right? Where we were we were each actually going to walk away with like 50,000 right each between oh, okay. okay so the first deal you i'm assuming you fund it yourself right so so that particular first deal we ended up i ended up not doing it because i needed that funding to flip the second deal because they had more money okay so what did you so i ended up wholesaling that first deal to an end buyer okay so that's that was the that was the strategy guys so when you say flip it so I was kind of like, okay, what do you mean by flip? So can you explain what flipping is, right? Well, so so flip meaning you found a distressed property or or a decently distressed property, and you're gonna actually put some money into it, fix it up, and sell it at a retail price. But because that funding was gonna go to a different project, project two, that had more equity in it, because like I said, we were each gonna walk away with fifty thousand versus 25. So I ended up wholesaling that deal to an end buyer or to a contractor or or, or another flipper for an assignment fee. Right. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you want me to express or explain wholesaling. Um, no. So you were just saying, uh, so my understanding is like you you just kind of wholesale, just say you kind of just you didn't want to fix it up. You just want to like just give it to somebody else to, to get some money because you were more interested in that second deal, right? Correct, correct. We'll keep it that simple, right? We'll keep, just keep it that simple. Yep. So because the second deal was, what was it? It was a hundred K. Yep. And and you were, and it was our market target for 230, right? Two, 250, 250. Yep, yep. Wow, kept getting, okay, great. And that was the one that well, like somebody passed away in, right? No, 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 the, the, the mom had passed away Okay. not in the house but <laughs> the brother in the in the trust the property was rented to the brother that we were talking to oh, okay. and he didn't want to do anything with it because he had another sibling who had lived at the house that was squatting right so yeah. we didn't want to do anything with it so we were going to walk away with a quite a bit i mean yeah. what i calculated was 50 between each of us okay and so what ended up happening was he didn't want to go that long, right? So, um, at the end of the day, we we ended up wholesaling it to the same end buyer that I wholesaled it, the the first property. So I I had this property under contract already yeah. with the end buyer to be wholesaled. Yeah. And he says, "Hey, it's gonna take way longer than when I expected." Because I told him, "Look, flipping is not quick, right? It's not something you can say, hey, I want money right away.' You yeah. have." have it which can take up to like one or two months depending on the, the the type of things you have to go through it can be on market for another one or two months um and then could be on on you know in the contract with the empire in a bank for another one or two months so you might end up six months without anything so uh, with that particular uh situation we've talked about it and uh he says let's just wholesale it right so we ended up wholesaling it to this first uh buyer again and invest yeah. and i think we each walked away with like twenty two thousand. yeah so yeah. i mean it's still not a bad day yeah for like i don't know 430 bucks worth of direct mail <laughs> <laughs> in this particular case it's actually um you know free right so um because i didn't pay him to to reference right uh -huh. so we ended up partnering with that deal oh okay and that's that's why i always say the power of networking is so huge because things like this can fall in your lap i mean i i was helping him 
with the good faith in my heart saying, hey, you can do it this way. But because he didn't know, you know, he says, hey, let's let me help you help me. Right. So we, we were able to walk away with a lot. You know, I mean, a good amount of money, basically. Awesome. Kind of, kind of reminds me of like when Robert Kiyosaki says is, you know, the velocity of money. Right. You want yep. to keep moving money to make more money fast. Right. So if you were going to hold on to that money or if you're going to flip it, right, or take fix it up or something, it takes longer for you to do that. Yep. You want to get to the next deal that makes more money. So you took that, got rid of it quickly to buy the next deal. Correct. Right? Correct. And that made you more money. <clears throat> and that's always how it is, guys. Like, you know, we talk about like my, my mentor says, you know, I was thinking about how you multi multiply money, you know, not adding and subtracting. How do you multiply it and to get more faster? So awesome. So so now we're down with two deals, right? So yep. then how did you find your third deal? So the third deal, um, actually one of my brother-in-law, um, this property had been vacated. This property is right next to his, right? And it's been vacated for probably over, a, I would say, 10 years, right? Yeah. So the guy lived there at the height of the market. He said, F Wells Fargo, I'm leaving. I'm not paying him a single penny. So he, he, he skipped town. He yeah. went you know, he didn't really skip town, but, you know, that's what he told everybody. But he, he ended up, I found out he ended up living in Clovis, which is the neighboring city. Um, but, you know, we started in June. That particular deal we started, I started negotiating with him in June. And we didn't lock that deal up until October. So it took us about four months to to in, to finally lock up that deal. Yeah. Right. So we we locked it up at 200000 and that deal was worth easily three hundred thousand. So there was a few there was a few luggage or 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 catch with that, right? So the guy had owned <clears throat> Wells Fargo had foreclosed on this guy, right? Because Wells Fargo did not follow through with the proper foreclosure process, they reconvened the title back to him. So it went under his name. So uh -huh. for for Within that 10 years, I think he went five years without paying. And then Wells Fargo foreclosed on him for like three years and nothing had happened, right? Because they didn't do their due diligence. Because within the uh, foreclosure process, you have to follow those guidelines. If you miss any of those guidelines, you can literally get a lawyer to, you know, and I'm not a lawyer CPA, but you can literally fight that to get the property back because they're not doing their due diligence of and no how did you figure that out like how did you get inside info well i mean i well that's that's the power of having uh, a, a good title company right because uh one of the things that they didn't know because i was like hey you know i had reached out to my title company and i've asked my escrow officer i said hey who owns this property and they came back and said hey you know, because on my on the system I use, it show Wells Fargo, and I'm like, can you sh can you tell me who owns this property? And she came back, and you know, because when they do their light prelim search, it shows who owns title, and title was vested with the seller that I'm working with. And so when I reached out to them, and this was like cold calling, right? So I cold called them. I I even cold text them, right? Like, hey. Yeah. This is this your property? I mean, it's out of the blue. I, I don't know if I'm getting the right number or not, but I'm you know it's still an attempt to reach out, right? So I I reached out to to them and then I kept pinging it. I mean, I called the 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 wife's phone and I can I knew it was her because she in her voicemail it said you know it's so and so and so. So I was like, okay, this is the right number. So I kept texting that. I know yeah. she. Was calling me back but she can see my text right so i was texting it to her and then one day she finally says hey that's our house we're 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 wanting to sell it but we, we we're trying to figure out if it's under our, our name or not yeah we gotta go to, we gotta go see records so um long story short i gave her all that information because i've done my homework already with title company yeah. i said you guys still own it give me your email i sent everything to them and you know we talked but um you know, they were able to clear title with Wells Fargo. Here's a guy that owns Wells Fargo about 200 and like 50, 60,000. Yeah. And he was able to negotiate with, with Wells Fargo 
to bring it down to about 30,000. What? Yes, believe it or not. <laughs> okay. I didn't believe it at first because he owed that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Wells Fargo says, pay us 30,000 and we'll walk away. Yeah. Because Wells Fargo was already losing money with this guy. So they didn't want to, they were just cutting their loss. So then, okay, so so he locked it in at 30K. So how much was he willing to let it go for you? So he wasn't willing to lock it in at 30 with Wells Fargo too, even though I told him that's a good price. Yeah, he was yeah. To negotiate to what with Wells Fargo to lower it to 24. Oh my but god. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so he sold me the property for 200,000. Okay, okay, yeah. Yep. So so I got it for 200,000. So the he house, made money. He made money. In he it. made money. I made money. It's a win-win. Wells Fargo lose. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure he was collect it was Fargo was in collecting interest. But this this is this particular deal is is actually pretty special because in, in this case, I didn't actually wholesale it, but one of the guys that has actually been helping me, I reached out to him and I said, Hey, you know, his name was Jason. And I said, Jason, can you um, you know, are you interested in partnering up with this particular case? Um, because this is what it is. And he's like, let me look at the numbers, see if it makes sense, we can work it out. <clears throat> Long story short. He ended up funding the deal, paying everything, and at closing we 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 split it 50 50. So he got a fifty thousand, or he got a fifty percent cut. I got a fifty percent cut after everything was paid, after interest has been paid, his rehab has been paid. So I think we walked away with like sixteen thousand each or something like that. Jeez. Yeah. How long was this? So you said it was from October last year. August, um, oh, sorry, June, 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 to, well, so let me back up. <clears throat> June to October was when we negotiated, but yes, from October to January was when we got the deal closed. So we were done in the middle of November. We had it locked up in contract with a retail buyer, which is somebody, you know, on the MLS, you know, realtor, Zillow, your, your typical buyer. We got it locked up in November. And it didn't close until I think like January 16th or something like that. Wow. Dude, there, there was so much content in this in this deal, guys. You guys comment below. What did you guys learn? I mean, I, I took a couple of notes here, but there's so much content that he just gave out that was like amazing. I want to see what you guys uh what you guys learned. Can you can you guys comment what you guys learned? There was so much great content that came out from this from this third deal. All right, so uh, so for those of you guys who just joined, like what what's going on here? You know, we were at Two Bang, right, out of California. You know, real hustler, got a job. You know, does judo, black belt. <laughs> I call it, it, dude. You're almost like what is brown belt and black belt almost the same thing? I mean, it's like it's, you're just yeah. Like, I I'm sure I'm I'm probably gonna get promoted this year, but yeah. We'll so he's like he does karate he does judo he's got four kids you know and he's like you know he's, he's an engineer graduated you know with an engineering degree works right and he's getting these deals you know just closed on four deals you know last month uh dude that first deal was probably like what probably, was that your first the fastest one i think that that took like what a couple months a month or so maybe i think to close I would so think. The, first, the, the first deal took it took us a little while because title but that second deal where it came through the contract they actually closed i think we closed that one in like 15 or 16 days and you know we each walked away with like 22. so what was the overall time frame on that first one what was that the overall time frame on that first particular one after we got an escrow was probably close to about two and a half months two and months that was yeah. That was because she had had a lien on it. Yeah. And, well, she had two lien on it. One was through a lawyer, which we were able to find. One was through another uh, lien holder that, you know, they put. This is a quick, you know, just saying, hey, you know, you're not really doing much here. Yeah. It's kind of like you're just pushing papers. Yeah. <laughs> essentially, that's that's what a wholesaling is. Is yeah. just pushing paper. Right. Um, and and I think that's why I like that piece a little bit more because I'm always in front of a computer. 
and I can push. It's just an email, right? Yeah. I get the I get the seller to I send them a um, a contract through DocuSign. They sign it. Comes back to me. I push it through title, open escrow. I find my end buyer, come together, bring the money. They the seller comes to sign, and the other guy comes to sign, and then we all get a check. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. It's like you no. Know, sometimes I don't even see the property, right? I mean, um, yeah. So <laughs> so then that first one was two months. The, the second one was what? How long did that take you? Less less than a month. Jeez. And then uh, the third one was like from June to like whatever, you know. You well, when we got it locked up was in uh, November, but I mean, in that particular case, uh, probably about three months. Yeah, but I mean, that's, but it's like, I'm talking about like, like physical work and stuff like that. You I mean, you're not, you're not out sweating, you you know, you no, know, I, you're, uh, here, you're not a lot like, dude, you're like, you're just like, okay, I'm pushing paper, I'm doing this, you know, I'm yeah. being really, you know, I'm hunting these. You know, documents down. I'm just kind of pushing these guys. You know, that's all it is. That's all it takes, guys. Yep, yep. Mike goes, you the man. Right? That what it is. <laughs> Who goes, Cooley goes, well played, right? You know, yep. average total repair and expense. I don't think you didn't even work on these, right? No, I don't. Um, so for this particular deal, I don't. Um, <clears throat> so if you're talking about just a regular rehab um, for – a thousand square foot or less. I spent on average about thirty thousand um, for repair, uh, rehab, granite countertop, flooring, your bathroom. Um, but most of the stuff I don't like. If it's a big rehab like that, guys, I I have to buy the deal right because I can't. I, I don't have time because I work. So I'm managing the contractor to be able to finish the project for me, right? And I buy that with with that that built-in equity buffer piece. So the money that I'm using to pay them is essentially being paid back to me. And I don't like, I'm sure I go out there and say, okay, I gotta, I gotta sweep the floor cause it's dirty. Right. But <laughs> I'm getting to the point where some of these, I'm trying not to be like hands on yeah. and I'm just letting my contractor do the work. Cause they've seen, they've worked with me and they know my pattern. I'm like, go to home Depot, get this color, get this color, get this trim, get this da 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 da. Give me a text to confirm at Home Depot, and once they get everything, Home Depot Pro Service sends me a text, says, hey, we're buying this. I click a one, approve, and we're done. Bob's your uncle. Damn. So I'm at work still, and I get a little text, and I'm done. So he's he's got, you know, his, his work income stream, right, making money being an engineer. And then this is his second stream of income, which is, you know, pushing papers around, trying to be a little persistent, you know, uh, just, you know, he's, he's got a little business going, right? He's, he's going, uh, he's got guys that he's, you know, paying like contractors and stuff like that. And then at the end of the day, he gets paid, you know, that's awesome, bro. Um, next deal, like your fourth deal. How did, how did that go? Okay. So this, <laughs> this particular one is actually pretty uh, special too. Um, <clears throat> so give me a second. So this particular deal is actually a seller finance deal. Um, uh, I was mailing letters to her, uh, to, to, to absentee owners. In this particular case, this lady reached out to me and said, hey, you know, um, I'm, in, I'm finally interested in selling my properties. You've been mailing me all these letters and, and you know, I, I want to sell now. And that's that to an investor is music to our ear because that, that means we don't have to work hard for it. Yeah, yeah. She calls me and she says, hey, I got this house. And I'm like, okay, blah, 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 blah. Find out all the information about the house. How much are you wanting? She wants this much, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, what I try to do is I try to meet people in person, right? <laughs> That's my wife in the back. Hey. So, so I try to meet people in person because that's what sells, right? It's the relationship. But um, I was able to get this deal locked up at, 155 and the house is easily worth about 230. Okay. That's and the point. reason why this particular one was a little bit more expensive and I was willing to take it for a little bit more expensive was because the seller was willing to seller financed it. So she tells me to I I don't have a retirement. 
okay? Or my retirement is very little. So I need this house to be able to support me. So why, why, why was she looking to do a sell of finance? Did you convince her or did you go, or did she just like, I mean, I'm sure she didn't, why did she just sell it? You know, that's usually how it goes, right? They go, I just want to sell the house. But how did you get to that point where you go, oh, yeah, I'll do a sell of finance with you? Cause that's, that's hard to push. Yeah. I mean, I, I think as you, as an, as a, as a clever or, or a creative investor, you have to find niches, right? So to me, I, I try to, I try to understand what her situation was. Um, and the way she was explaining it was she wanted some money and, you know, this money was going to keep her, you know, to sustain her for a little bit, but she was interested in like having some type of like monthly type income, like the way she has it. And the reason why she was interested in doing that was because she didn't want to have to fix the house anymore. She doesn't know how to fix the house and she doesn't want to deal with it. So she's coming to me as an investor saying, Hey, I want you to, you know, I want to finance this for you, but, um, at the same time, you know, I don't want to have to deal with the house stuff. So we, we ended up, um, I think we ended up, um, agreeing on an $800 payment, zero interest, 15 year payment, no balloon, um, no early, no prepayment penalty. And she carries the note. And I think she had like, she had $12,000, um, line of credit that she had to pay back. So I came in with 15,000 to cover closing costs and give her like a few grand to, to walk away with. Right. And then now I pay her every month on that. Wow. So wait, so, so let's, I mean, let's, let's explain this to like people that don't know. Right. So you came in with 15 K what's the 155. So the, the, the 155 is the purchase price, yeah. right? So the 155 is the purchase price. The 15,000 is the down payment that's used to get that. Right. And the only reason why she wanted that amount, she said she was okay. I mean, if she hadn't, if she didn't owe anything to the bank, she would have just gave it to me for free or I would say for free, but with no down payment. Yeah. But because she owed 12,000, she needed to clear that off because there's a lien on there. Right. So we had to literally pay 15,000, right? I think at the end of the day, she walked away with like a $2,500 check or something like that. Yeah. And I ended up paying, you know, with closing costs and everything, I ended up paying like 18,000 or whatever it was. <laughs> so, so this was the easy one, right? Yeah, this, this was actually easy. We, we closed this one within like three weeks. We could have closed it earlier. Um, I think she wanted to wait until this year to close it just because she didn't want to deal with the tax. Yeah. So, so in her eyes, she wanted, she, the problem was she wanted just to clear like 12,000 or something on her credit card or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You came in and goes, Hey, I'm willing to take care of that for you. Right. Yeah. That was her need. And you saw that and, she, and she's like, Hey, I want some income out after that. After that. Cause you know, there were two, right? her two needs were, I need to take care of this balance. And I didn't want to fix the house, right? Yep. And she's like, and I want some money out of it. <clears throat> like correct, correct, correct. And that's how you came in and go, hey, we can do self-financing. I'll give you some money. Yeah. You know, I'll, we'll pay off your debt, whatever it is. That made yeah. her happy. I mean, and then and then you paid you, you're gonna take care of the rest of the, you know, whatever repairs that need to be. Yep. Right. And then you you slow drip her some money, right? Yep. Pretty much about it. You know, yep. so, come up with it. so in that particular case, I think um, after PITI everything, we I think we cash flow about two hundred and two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yep. bucks, you know. So there you guys go. <laughs> it's four deals. Easy. I mean, I, I don't know if it's easy, but it takes it takes a persistent person to do this, right? Yeah. Yes. It's I mean it it sounds easy, right? But it takes a while, but you're not like, you're not really, it's just using your brains to like say, Hey, how can I, make, how do I make this work? Right. How do I, how do I take a problem and kind of resolve for somebody to make it a win situation for them and make it win situation for me. So that's awesome. I mean, you made it like really easy <clears throat> and these deals are like, you know, especially that third one, 
holy cow. I yeah. mean, it took you forever, but you still got it. You know, that, I mean, that took like, I would have given up like the first, <laughs> I don't know, two months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, it took like, you're like, you probably, I mean, I mean, how did, I mean, how did you, who's your mentor? I mean, I guess that's the first thing I ask is, how did you get this knowledge? I mean, like, to go, to get this far. I, I think um, <clears throat> so. So that's one question I ask myself, right? Because people ask me, "Hey, who's your mentor?" Right? Um, actuality, I don't. I don't really have one guy that says, "Hey, I'm your mentor." Right? Um, a lot of this stuff, I just kind of learn as I go, and I just talk to people who, you know, in this particular case, I think the closest person I have to a mentor um, is Jason, right? This partner I went in because every time I. And, the, you know, I always say there's a lot of big sharks in Fresno, um, big, big sharks, but and they all know who I am and I know who they are. Right. But the thing is, when I ask him a question like, hey, I'm stuck on this, what do I do, none of them respond. Right. But but Jason respond. He's like, hey, I ran into that before and this is what I do. And mm -hmm. I, I think I think he owns like six, 60 units or something like that. Single family, some multifamily. Um, he's flipped over. I don't know. In his four or five year spam, he's flipped over 100 plus units. So, I mean, our houses and that guy's on a roll, but he's my closest mentor. But I think to me, it's it's just mainly YouTube, searching for answers, talking to you guys on the group. Um, I think that motivates me a lot too, um, honestly, is that just reaching out and having you guys, you know, just give me the positive feedbacks or, or even your input to what you face. And, you know, I just take some of that and you know, I, I think at the end of the day, it's the way I look at it is whether you do the right thing, the wrong thing, it's still better than not doing anything. Right. So so that's how I kind of live my life now is that if you do something and it's right, you're good. If you do something and it's wrong, you learn from it and you fall forward. Right. Next time I'm not going to do it. Yeah. It's it's farther than you not doing anything. Right. Yeah. And that's what most of the people I keep telling you guys. Do something, just do it. Don't sit on the sideline. Oh, I'm gonna wait for the market to crash before I jump in. And I'm like, <laughs> you won't know by that time. You have to jump in and make these mistakes, right? I mean, that's how we learn, right? And and people say that that's a lot of money to make mistakes. And I said, so is going to school. You go to college, you spend 40,000 on a degree that you might come out not even getting the job that you're talking about, you know what I mean? So that to me is also tuition. I call it tuition. Every mistake I've learned in real estate, I call it tuition. And the reason why I call it tuition is I've learned from that. And, yeah. and that's something I grow from. Awesome. Awesome. You guys have any questions? Go ahead and post. Um, uh, let's do a fire round, right? Yep. Fire off some questions, right? <clears throat> do I need money to do what you're doing? No. You don't. I, I mean, if you go back, I talked about wholesaling. Um, you don't need a lot of money or essentially no money at all. Um, and I mean, the, the whole point here is that when you guys are looking at stuff, the stuff I'm talking about is off market. Right. And. And when you find off market, I, I you know, Sean Terry has a good point here is that you have to dig through a lot of dirt to find gold. Right. And that's what I'm essentially that's what I'm doing. When you guys are just sitting at home browsing through Zillow's and this and that, it, it's kind of hard to find it because the gold has already been dug out, right? And you guys are just going through dirt. But to me, I'm going out there reaching out, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you find these individuals that says, hey, I don't want to do a $40,000 repair on this roof or this property, they're willing to let it go for a cheaper price than you know anybody would, right? And, and when you get... All you're doing, you know, and, and we, I don't know if you want me to elaborate on wholesaling so that some of the folks understand it. Oh, well, we're, I mean, if they want, they can message you. Okay. Yeah, 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 message me. But I mean, wholesaling is probably a no money down strategy. Great. So that's, that's the quick thing about, it. do I need to go to school for this? <laughs> um, I, I say this all the time. No. You, you <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I, I know we have the debate of, you know, do you need your realtor's license and this and that. I, I'm not a licensed realtor yeah. and I don't, I don't wish to be one. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, we got, 
we got investors out there that are like what 21 younger young you know even younger ones out there that that buys properties you know and does this kind of stuff so awesome so um any what, what are your future plans man we're getting close to the end of the show so like just just curious to see where where you're heading so this year my wife and i um we, we talked about our goal um uh, we've been talking about our goals for like the last two years three years her and i at the beginning of the year we we sit down and we talk about what we want to do this physical year um we have you know a few things that we focus on i think it was like three or four things we mainly focus on um the financial piece of it what we want to try to achieve in terms of a monetary amount you know half a million in profit or you know 20 30 units or whatever right so that's one piece the second piece is our health um it's very important i mean all this money is worth the crap if you know you're not healthy i mean you know i i mean you look at kobe bryant right that's sad thing that the guy died right so i mean what is he going to do with that and the example of steve job you guys a billionaire but he you know his health isn't there so health is very important and that's where that judo piece comes in right because that's how i that's how i maintain my health um third thing we mainly focus on is our relationship so between my wife and i we talk about you know what we want to do fiscal year and a lot of the time it, it's you know i'll give you guys an example for this piece we plan four big vacation trips within a year and that's about every three months right so in every three months my wife and i go on a trip so this way our relationship is is help healthy right no kids nothing just between us and that's how we stay and have this strong relationship uh the last piece is family right so between my family and i um i think we plan like eight about eight or so uh vacation a uh, mini vacation type uh just within the states around surrounding areas sometimes we do a bigger trip uh, that that's mainly the the goals that we have for this year um, I have my five-year goal, 10-year goal, um, and so on and so forth. Awesome, man. Cool. So uh, we're going to add a, a different segment here uh, to our show here, and that's uh, um, <clears throat> something new that we're going to add to, and it's just a simple question, right? So since we, we're a show about money, like uh, if, if I was to give you $1 billion right now, give me two things you would do with it. So half of the money i would leverage and buy as much apartment unit as i can okay awesome. yeah the other half of the money i would use to market and network as much as i can so that i can triple quadruple 10x all that money back in that's how i, that's how I would do it. i know what you mean but explain that because some people don't understand that yeah so um i i think you know let me back up a little bit right because direct mail does cost money right and you talked about a thousand letter it's only 430 bucks the problem is that a lot of people don't want to put that money up front because it's upfront cost that they're concerned that they might not get back so what i mean by half a million or 500 million dollars is that if i can use that to market myself and network myself these people will come back with tripled amount and say hey too we want to do deals with you we want to do this with you and that money will come back because essentially that's other people's money with yours to power it up to to power or to increase the power of what you currently have leverage it and that's it there we go we, there we go that's our show guys so um any last words any last words from uh any questions uh guys if, if you guys are watching this uh uh on replay and stuff go ahead and comment i'm sure uh he'll probably come in and answer some of the questions is that is that cool come back answer some questions on the chat if he has if, if they comment is that cool too yeah yeah that's good i'm um, fine with uh following up with comments okay uh, i mean i'm always ha happy to help uh again that's that's why i'm here uh again you know i don't know if we need we're ending our segment here but um yeah so uh yeah so otherwise um guys this is a good guy to connect with so how do people get a hold of you i think uh i think you do have a website right yeah so my website's called um mortgagefreefresno.com um you guys can reach out to me on there um if not you guys can reach out to me on facebook i i'm really active there 
um, Instagram. I'm also on there. So, you know, feel free to follow, feel free to comment me. And if I haven't responded back to any of you guys, that's probably because I'm busy. So ping me again. I, you know, I, I constantly, I'm, I'm, you know, I try to manage my time, but sometimes I, I, I get a little busy. Awesome. Thanks, man. Uh, yep. and, hey, like I say, hey, thanks for, um, thanks for, um, um, in, in the real estate group, uh, I know, uh, a lot of people do look up to you. I, I know you supply co content and that's valuable information. I mean, guys, if you guys are, if you guys are interested in real estate, like I said, we have a Hmong real estate group that you can join. And in two years, one of our biggest contributor in the group that supplies information. So, uh, you'll see him in there, uh, it's just supplying information. Um, he's, <clears throat> he's really big socially so i mean he's transparent uh i see whatever he does on facebook so he's i see that you're a good guy bro so yep. uh, even you come here spilling your information here that I mean that's you know that's that's awesome so we appreciate you come and just share some knowledge uh connect with this guy add him to your friends list you know <clears throat> if you're interested in what he does connect to his website i think i put it is that correct mortgagefreefresno.com correct uh, correct okay cool uh, you can connect to him through there and then add him on Facebook and then dude, just start talking, you know. Like I said, um, hang around the right guys, you know, you'll be all right. If you hang around the wrong guys, you'll be in the wrong places. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, that's true. All right, so that ends our show, guys. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you again, too. And uh, again, yeah, if you guys have any questions after this uh, after the show is a comment below, he'll come back and, and answer uh, whatever comments you guys have. Anything else to say too? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I appreciate you uh, welcoming me on the show. And I know, I mean, a lot of you guys have mentioned that you guys want me to be on the show and hear my side of the story and whatnot. So I, uh, you know, here I am, you know, again, I'm, I'm giving you guys all the content I can and, you know, if, if you guys didn't hear everything that you guys needed to hear, just message me and I'll be happy to chat with you guys. Awesome. All right, guys. Good night. See you All later. right. Thanks, too. All right. Thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm.